Disney Cruise Line just introduced a massive change to its online check-in process. And with my upcoming cruise to Alaska, I figured now would be a great time to take you step-by-step -step through the check-in process so you guys know exactly what to expect when it comes time to check in for your cruise. We're gonna be explaining all of this and more up next. <laughs> What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking you step by step through the Disney Cruise Line check-in process. Now as I mentioned earlier Disney Cruise Line just introduced a massive change to the online check-in process that you guys need to be aware of. As of today May 1st of 2023 Disney Cruise Line has introduced a new tiered check-in system. What this means is depending on your Disney Cruise Line Castaway Club status you will be able to check in earlier for your Disney Cruise Line sailing. With this new tiered system, we now have separate check-in days available for all levels of Castaway Club status. Now, before the system was in place, the way it worked was everyone, regardless of Castaway Club status, was on a level playing field as far as check-in date for their cruise. All guests, regardless of status, were able to check in 30 days prior to their sail date. Let's go ahead and go through the updated tier list. Now that the official 25th Silver Anniversary at Sea celebration has started with Disney Cruise Line, they introduced the brand new Pearl tier to the Castaway Club, and with that comes a a whole slew of brand new benefits. And the very first benefit that we have is that Pearl and Concierge guests will now be able to check in up to 40 days prior to their sale date. That is a whole 10 day head start ahead of brand new Disney cruisers. Following that, we have Platinum status who are now allowed to check in up to 38 days prior to their sale date. Moving on down to Gold status, they are allowed to check in 35 days prior to their sale date. And Silver, they are allowed to check in 33 days from their sale date. And no changes to first time cruisers you guys are checking in 30 days prior to your sale date. So because we are officially 34 days away from our Alaskan Disney cruise, I was eligible this morning to check in for my cruise. So let's go ahead, go through the entire process so that way you guys know what to expect when it comes time for you to check in. Now, one thing I want to say off the bat is that I am not sailing with children. I personally do not know what additional steps need to be taken to sail with children. Off the top of my head, I do know that there is an additional authorization form that you need to fill out. And I know that there are a few extra steps here in the check-in process for kids, but I do not personally know what those steps are. Now make sure that when you start this check-in process, you have everything that you need. You're going to need a picture of your passport, or if you're using a birth certificate, you're gonna need your birth certificate and a driver's license. You're gonna need a selfie of each person that is in your party. We're gonna be going over that in greater detail in just a little bit. You're also going to need a credit card for your onboard account. And last but not least, you need all of your post-cruise information. But with all that being said, let's go ahead on over to the Disney Cruise Cruise Line website and begin the check-in process. Once you make it to the home page of the Disney Cruise Line website, you're going to head on up to the top tab where it says already booked and you're going to go ahead and click that. And on the next screen, you're going to go ahead and log in with whatever login information you use to book your cruise. Okay, so the page that you're going to be looking at now is going to be your closest cruise. If you have multiple cruises booked, you're able to go over here to this drop down menu where it says your reservation number and you will have a full list of every Disney Cruise Line sailing that you have booked now and in the future. Right now, what you're looking at is the main page for my Alaskan cruise. We're gonna go ahead and scroll on down just a little bit and you're gonna see the section that says online check-in. You'll know that it's time for your check-in when you see the little check-in link down there below in blue. You go ahead and click that and it is going to take you to the official check-in website. All right, we have made it to the official Disney Cruise Line check-in website. You don't really need to do anything on this first page other than maybe review that this is in fact the cruise that you are wanting to check in for. It gives you a brief overview of what you can expect to see during your check-in process. We're going to go ahead and scroll on up to the top and we are going to click begin check-in. Now over here is the first page of the check-in process. This is the guest information. This is where you're going to fill out all the basic information for everyone that is going to be in your stateroom. On the screen, you should see a list of every passenger that is going to be in your stateroom. For us, we have three guests in our stateroom, including my mother, Coda, and myself. We're going to go ahead and start with my mother. And the first thing that you're going to see is the section where you fill out your home address information. You're going to fill out your home address information and you're also going to fill out your contact information. They're going to ask for your
your email address and for your phone number. In case English is not your first language and you do have a preferred language, you do have the option to change that if you so desire. And you are also going to be asked to provide an emergency contact. This is who Disney Cruise Line is going to contact in case anything does happen to you on the cruise. And to make your check-in process a little bit easier, I always recommend using the same emergency contacts for every person that is in your stateroom. So for example, I have my dad here as my emergency contact because he is not going to be sailing with us. He is going to be staying home. So we're going to go down here and we're going to go ahead and check the box for my name and Dakota's name, letting Disney Cruise Line know that we want them to contact my dad for any member of our party. Next up, you will be asked to provide your passport or identification information. For us personally, we are going to be using our passports. Make sure you have pictures of your passport ready to upload. If you are doing this on your phone, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot faster. You can just take a picture from your phone and upload it straight from your phone. If you're using your computer, make sure you have a picture of your passport uploaded onto your computer to upload onto the website. You have to make sure that the picture of your passport is clear and everything is able to be read. We're going to go ahead and upload the passport photo right now. I'm going to go ahead and blur out what I need to. You'll know that your passport photo was uploaded successfully and everything was clear because Disney is going to take the information from your photo and they are going to auto populate the information in these next couple boxes. It's going to fill out your last name, your first name, your ID number, your date of birth, the expiration date of your passport, and the country that it was issued in. Please make sure you review this information carefully because sometimes the process doesn't always work and you may need to fill it out manually. I know that that has happened to me a couple of times and I never caught it and I got stopped when I was at the port on embarkation day and I had to go through the extra steps of correcting that information. Next up, you are going to be asked to provide a security photo. Now, prior to the shutdown of 2020, Disney Cruise Line would take your security photo at the port. However, in an effort to streamline the process and make the embarkation day process a lot easier and a lot faster, they are asking you to provide it for them ahead of time. So basically what you're going to be doing is taking a selfie of yourself and every member of your party. All they are asking for is a proper headshot. Now, what they don't want you to do is not use any citizenship ID photo. They don't want Want you wearing any hats or any objects on your head. They don't want you wearing sunglasses and no other people or objects in the photo. So what I typically do is I find a blank wall in my house and I raise my camera up so that it is level with my face. No angled selfies. I know some of you folks out there like to take nice angled selfies, but just pretend that you're at the DMV or you're taking your passport photo and just snap a straight on photo of yourself against a plain background. Trust me, you do not need to look pretty for this photo. No one else is going to be seeing it other than the security personnel. Also, I know it's not listed here, but don't use any Snapchat filters. This is once again a security photo. If anything happens to you, they need to know exactly what you look like. You will know immediately if the photo that you uploaded is acceptable because you will see it say thank you. Your photo is currently under review and can't be modified. We'll let you know once it's been approved. There have been instances in the past where I submitted a security photo and it came up with a big red X and it said please take another photo. And once you are done with that, you're going to scroll down just a little bit more and you are going to have to answer this question. Will this guest be pregnant 24 weeks or more at any point during your sailing? Please make sure you're honest. You should know well in advance whether or not you're going to be 24 weeks pregnant at the time of sailing if you are checking in 30 to 40 days prior to your sailing. We're going to go ahead and click save and we are going to repeat this whole process again for every other member of your stateroom party. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys have made it this far into the video and you're finding any of the information that I am giving to you guys today helpful in any way, shape, or form, please help us out by leaving a like on the video as it greatly helps out the channel. If you like what you see here and you want to see more like it in the future, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well. It's 100% free to do and you can always unsubscribe later. All right, let's go ahead and continue with the check-in process. All right, once you are done with guest information, you are going to be brought over to the onboard account screen. Now here is where you're going to submit a credit card for any onboard spending or incidentals and also gratuity charges if you haven't prepaid them. There is no way around this. You do need to put a credit card down. So make sure you have that out and ready to go. On this first page, you're gonna fill out all of your credit card information. And once you're done with that, you're gonna scroll on down and you're gonna see payment coverage. Tell us which guests in your travel 
party for whom you will be financially responsible. Then let us know which guests are allowed to charge to your onboard account. So just to make things easier, I put my mom as the person who is going to be financially responsible in the group. We put her credit card down and we went ahead and ticked the boxes where Daisy Vasquez will pay for Adrian Vasquez and Dakota and Daisy Vasquez grants charging privileges to Adrian and Dakota. This is super important. If you do not want your child to be going around the ship charging to your card without your knowledge, please make sure you have these boxes unchecked. That way your son or daughter or grandma, whoever, cannot charge to your card without you knowing. Believe me, this happens a lot. There are parents out there who do not pay attention to this and they come to the end of their cruise and find out that their child has been ringing up a huge bill. Or if you trust your kids or family members, you can go ahead and leave these boxes checked and they can charge whenever they need to. At the very bottom of the page, you have guest authorization. I assume full responsibility for all amounts incurred during my Disney cruise vacation, including all charges made by persons listed above. I authorize all such amounts due to be charged to the credit card listed above or agree to make alternate payments in full prior to debarkation of the ship. You're gonna go ahead and click that and we are going to continue. Next up, we have travel plans. This is where you are going to fill out what you're gonna be doing before and after the cruise. So for this, you need all of your travel information. You need all the flight information going in and out of your embarkation and debarkation ports and any possible hotel information. Now I will say you don't have to have all your flight and hotel information with you at the time of check-in. You can leave all of this blank or just say that you're not flying in or out for your cruise and you're just driving back home. But if you are wanting to fill out your information for Disney's records so that way they have it on file in case anything does happen, you're going to need your airline, your flight number, the departure city, and the departure date and time. It's it's also going to be asking for your arrival city, arrival date, and arrival time as well. It's also going to ask you how many flight segments are in your outbound or inbound trips. Just to make things easier for us, we say no, we are not flying into our cruise destination, and it will also ask where you're going to be going after your cruise. We always put hotel or other address, and we just use our home address. It's going to be asking you how you're going to be leaving the port terminal. You can either put car parked at ship terminal. If you're going to be going to a Disney resort or you're going to be heading to the airport using a Disney transfer, you're going to be putting that information down there. You also have an option for private transfers or rental car or shuttle. Again, all of this isn't super important information for Disney to have, but it does make things a lot easier if they do need to pull this information up. And if all the guests in your stateroom are going to be sharing the same travel plans, you can go ahead and check the boxes. We're going to go ahead and do that here for Adrian and Dakota, and we're going going to go ahead and move on. All right, now, if everything has gone according to plan, this next page is where you are going to choose your port arrival time. Now, please bear in mind, if you are flying in the day of your embarkation day, which I highly recommend you do not do that, make sure you choose a port arrival time that makes sense. If your flight lands at 11 o'clock in the morning on your embarkation day, you should not be picking an 11.30 port arrival time. From the time you land to the time you get to the port, more than likely it's not going to take Take you less than 30 minutes. So for us personally, we are going to be flying into Vancouver two days before our embarkation day. So we already know that we are going to be there nice and early. So we're going to go ahead and click 1130 to 1145 as our arrival time. And you can see here, you have many options for different port arrival times. These port arrival times will also help determine what boarding group you are in. It looks like the latest port arrival time that we have at the moment is 2.30 to 2.45 p.m. We're gonna go ahead and select our port arrival time, hit enter, and now we have our cruise contract. While you don't have to read the cruise contract, I highly recommend you skim through it at least once, that way you know what you're getting yourself into. If any issues do arise on the sailing, you do need to be aware of the cruise line contract and what your rights are and what the cruise line's rights are. We're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom because I have read it many a times. We're going to go ahead and click I have read and understand the cruise contract and agree to the provisions of the cruise contract on behalf of myself and the other members of my travel party. We're going to go ahead and click that box and hit complete check-in. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you are done. If everything went according to plan, you should have your port arrival form page next. This is where you are going to find out your boarding group, which for us, we are boarding 
group seven. We have our assembly station, which is assembly station O, and we have our port arrival time over here of 11.30 to 11.45 on June 5th of 2023, sailing on the Disney Wonder, and we have our individual QR codes. If you are checking in with your phone using the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, I highly recommend adding these QR codes to your mobile wallet. That way on embarkation day, it will be a lot easier to pull up your QR codes and you're not having to scroll through your phone, trying to log back into the app or website, trying to find them out. Or you can go ahead and pull up your QR codes and screenshot them on your phone and make sure you add them to your favorites in your camera roll. You're gonna have an individual QR code for every member of your party and you're gonna need every QR code for every member of your party on embarkation day. So make sure you have those out and ready to go come embarkation day. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you have officially completed the check-in process for your Disney Cruise Line vacation. You are one step closer to stepping aboard one of the most magical ships at sea and you are almost ready to start your vacation. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything that you saw in today's video down in the comment section below. If you found any information in this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, please help us out by leaving a like on the video as it greatly helps out the channel. And subscribe if you are new around here and you want to see more content like this in the future. It is 100% free to do and you can always unsubscribe later if you so desire. If you guys want to help out the channel a little extra further, we do have the join button down below where you can become a channel member or you can support us on Patreon where we are going to be posting exclusive content and behind the scenes footage of our upcoming Alaska cruise. I hope you are all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, and I will see you guys in the next video.